Hey, this is Lorena, and I wanted to do a video for you of when, like, what do you do when you don't get no more work? <laughs> what do you do with yourself? I think it's something to consider when you're doing this kind of business, that there are seasons where you will be slow. And, uh... I used to panic when my slow seasons came because I'm like, oh my God, did I mess up? Did my clients not like me? Do they hate my guts? What? I would go, okay, my brain. But I guess I also found that when I'm working a lot and doing a lot of work for people, I am hoping and wishing that I would have time to do my own things. You know what I mean? And I think when you don't get work, that could be an opportunity. One of the things I try to do when I don't get work is I don't take it personal. <laughs> it's not my fault that a client didn't make another quilt for me to do. It's not my fault that, um, you know, after January, a lot of people have spent a lot of money and they don't want to spend more money on sending quilts to quilters and get their quilts made. So that's sometimes like the 1st of January, like going transitioning into it, it kind of slows down a little bit afterwards, maybe more February, because I'm still getting stuff done for those December late people. But January could be a slow month for me, and also uh, the summer can be a slow month for me. And the reason is, is a lot of people are not staying indoors, they're traveling and they're doing a lot of different things. Because those are the kind of people, you know, they're retirees and they may be traveling to visit family and they don't have time to sew. And uh, it's hot. Who in Texas wants a quilt in Texas? So learn not to take not getting clients in personal. And, uh, I had to learn that. Look how beautiful this minky quilt is, but also consider how much it shrunk from the minky, like it crinkled in. The quilt was from this edge, and it hung over probably to where you see this blue. <clears throat> so it, uh, minky quilts do kind of take up a lot. They're beautiful. What I've done is I've diversified myself, meaning I don't just do long arm quilting, I do embroidery work. I don't just do embroidery work, I do heat press vinyl work. And now I'm not just doing those three type of jobs, I'm also now doing laser stuff. So diversify yourself a little bit. I tend to save my money when I worked for embroidery, I save my money to buy a long arm. When I've been working with my long arm business, I save my money to pay the laser or buy even a heat press vinyl. Find things that entertain your mind or, for example, if you're a long arm or embroiderer, embroidery -er, diversify yourself by learning how to embroider bags or do hats or digitize logos. Long arm quilting, diversify yourself by doing custom work, um, doing unique kind of quilts. There's just, when you don't have work, this is the time and opportunity to kind of open yourself up to find new things to do. And uh, yeah, when you're busy, you don't have time for that. This is the time for it. So this is the stupid thing that happened when I set it up. It has this weird spacing. So <laughs> it stopped. And now I'm gonna finish this row and reset up this quilt because that's wrong. I don't like that. That means I would have to stop and restart every time and I don't have time for that. I wanted to do the whole row all the way across so I could get this quilt done. This is a quilt I made. This is mine. So ignore the... I don't know what the hell. I did sew it straight but look at that. Um, I'm sewing this for my grandchildren and uh, I want to get one of mine done, but this is what it looks like. I love this. It was a kit and I split the kit in two and I made two quilts with it. 
I also found out like for myself personally when you have a lot of work for a long period of time there is such a thing as burnout of course you guys know that I had some debilitating migraines after January well through January to March I even went into a depression I don't know if it was because I was burnt out or the migraines were so debilitating that it did something to me psychologically and I decided that after I finished all my clients quilts that you know what I'm gonna give some Lorena time some do what Lorena wants to do and I really took a whole month I believe all of April to do what Lorena wanted to do and so if you don't have work which was in April I didn't have a lot of work I barely had any work maybe like a quilt or two a week but in that time I took advantage of it and this is all share how I had to restart it Ugh. I started quilting my own quilts. One of the things that I found that is so discouraging is you're quilting for so many people and you don't get to quilt for yourself. So I quilted a whole bunch of quilts for myself and let me share you, share with you what they look like. I ended up piecing this one time when I was long arming, but it's just kind of the top spin sitting around. It's such a basic quilt, but I did something for myself. This isn't for me, this is from a family member, but I, I quilted this really simple quilt top for myself. Now, I also did some other quilts. Hold on, hold on. You know, stay with me, okay? Please don't leave me. <laughs> I don't have, I have abandonment issues. Please don't go away. <laughs> okay, oh my God. Lorena, okay, so I ended up finishing this quilt. We're gonna donate this to kids who have cancer, but this is a quilt a friend made, but I've had for years, probably like since 2015, and I finally quilted it. Another quilt, this is for the Sweet Honeybee. We were working on this quilt, and I finished and I quilted this quilt. A friend, uh, Chris uh, Bullard, helped me piece this together and I ended up quilting it and not only quilting it I also got to bind it so taking advantage of this downtime I got to do my own quilts <laughs> another one this is like a 20 year old quilt oh my god um, I've been tossing this fabric around like it's a it's a it's a lost sock or something you know and the other day or a couple weeks ago or a month or two ago, I decided just to put it on the long arm. I wanted to embroider filigree in the middle, embroider a whole bunch of, and forget it. I was never gonna embroider it. I was never gonna do it. So I just put it on and long armed it. And I put the binding on and she is lovely. And I think I'm gonna use these like when I go like on a picnic for outside, it's just, like a quilted tablecloth maybe not I don't know I just 20 years in and she's finally done I also kind of finished binding some quilts that I had quilted I did a video on this years ago and uh, I put the binding on things I did stuff for myself one more I want to show you one more hold on, hold on. I finished this one isn't she lovely and look oh look at this rose minky um look at that binding she is on there and she is stitched down she is an accomplished quilt oh my god she's accomplished i accomplished her <laughs> i had to go hunt that one down because my daughter took it to her room um <clears throat> mine now i guess what i wanted to share is i took time to do something for me when you work for people, you work for people and you're there to serve them and cater to them and you know, you're a service provider. And one of the things that happens is you don't work for you, of course, <laughs> and I think quilting what's neat about it is when I work for 
other clients, I have the machinery to also get my own quilts done. And not having a lot of work gave me an opportunity for me. As a mother of five kids, I think I consider everybody but me. I don't even put myself first because I didn't have that privilege when you're having children. You kind of lose that privilege. And nothing's wrong with that. It, it's a good thing, I feel. I'm, I became less selfish, self-absorbed, self-seeking. Um, I decided that the needs of my children were more valuable than my needs. And nothing's wrong with that, right? But there is a time, now that I'm 51 years old, that uh, it's okay to make myself important again. And so this time, I decided to put me first. You know, one of the things you guys look at is like, well, she has so much, but you only have so much time to play with so much. All of last year, I was working so hard to pay off the lasers that to be honest, I really never hardly got on the laser. I could honestly say in one year with the baby, orphan baby, I got on her like four times. Then I did a trade show, which got me on the machine for a full week every day. But time, you can have all this stuff, but if you don't have time to do it, it doesn't matter, you don't get to enjoy it. And so I've gotten on the laser, I've made several things which have been lovely. I made more corset thimbles. I have been testing these little suckers out. I've been using my corset thimbles. I don't know if you have it. I have been testing my corset thimbles on all those quilts to see if it's even worth putting out here. <laughs> and it's been great because I made these corsets and I've made several different styles and looks. It's been so much fun playing with them. I also ended up trying to learn how to laser multi-layered wood pieces. And uh, I ended up doing a sign for a friend who's getting married and that was kind of fun trying to create a sign when I've never really done anything with the laser hardly. I've done a couple things, okay, but not a lot. I'm learning that there's different ways of being creative. For example, you can spray paint this and it has a multi-layer in it. I could spray these down and then embed them with a different color if I wanted to. I'm learning how to make kind of like a puzzle system if I want it to be a puzzle um, with different designs. But I'm taking advantage of not having clients bringing me work so that I could ultimately focus on maybe something new, at least new to me. I had to do a job for a client and I did four quilts in one day and it was the most torturous, I've hated it. To be honest, I just hated it that day. I didn't want to be upstairs alone for a good, you know, eight hours or nine hours long arming. And I am so thankful for not getting work. Isn't that horrible to say that? I was thankful for not getting work. And a whole month of not getting work and not worrying about catering to other people's needs really was very freeing for me. <laughs> very freeing and I really took advantage of it. I'm going to different sewing events and sewing with my friends again. I have sat down and sewed on my sewing machine and just pieced. I haven't pieced for two years. That was really a lot of fun. I ended up going out to lunch with friends and not worrying about having to come back and quilt a quilt for a client. That was very liberating. It was a blessing and I'm thankful for that time. Thank God I also saved my money so that if I need it for my bills, I didn't spend it. And so it's okay for me to take time off because I don't have the pressure about the money either because I saved it. Enjoy the free time that you're getting right now. Your family probably needs you or you probably need you. So do something for you. I got a pedicure. I got manicures. I, you know, I just did stuff that kind of recharged me. I got quiet too. I sat and prayed. I read my Bible. Like I took time to do Lorena. To all your mothers, 
I hope you have a wonderful Mother's Day. I hope you give yourself some time for you. I love you and I'm cheering for you and I'm rooting for you and I hope you have the best day. You see that glory? My first sign. Not bad, huh?